Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Integrity Herbicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Real Agriculture. Uh, springtime is here, and uh, there's lots of things growing in farmers' fields. Uh, w- winter wheat and forages are uh, starting to show some signs of life, and so are the weeds. And uh, that means it's time to talk uh, weed control, spring weed control strategy. And uh, to share some thoughts on that and what we should be doing uh, to control these yield robbers in the weeks ahead, I'm joined by uh, BASF uh, agronomist Rob Miller. Hi, Rob. How's it going? Uh, it's excellent, Vern. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm like you. I'm trying to get out in the field and looking forward to sort of getting out and kicking some dirt. And I know that you may have been out looking around and checking out some fields in your area based in Guelph, Ontario. What are you seeing so far? It's late March. How are things shaping up? Yeah, for the most part, not surprised to anyone. Things are dry. And uh, for dry for this time of year, and I've never seen the snow melt as quickly as as we've seen here in Ontario, without that uh, heavy rain. So things are dry, but we're also setting ourselves up for that potential for an early spring. So it's it's exciting times. And, and like you said, we're seeing a lot of those larger weeds um, with the wide open fall that we had this year. Yeah. Now, typically, you know, a conversation on, on spring weed control really is driven by what happened the, fa- the, the last fall. And one thing I noticed last year was a lot of fall tillage, a lot of growers getting out there trying to manage some of that big corn residue and maybe, you know, uh, you know tickle, do a little tickle tillage and give their soybeans a, a boost this spring. Um, you know, Tell, talk to me, Rob, about you know what that means for weed, you know weed control implications that tillage as we move through this spring. Well, Vern, it should be no surprise to anyone that they've seen more fields worked up this fall, and that's where when we re- do that fall tillage, we actually rely more on post-emergence herbicides in crop, uh, depending on your cropping system, because. Typically, in a no-till or, or minimum tillage situation, we always like to apply those herbicides before you conduct that tillage, just because it is that second additional mode of action on controlling some of these winter annuals and perennial weeds. But typically with tillage, especially when it's conducted in the fall, it's a rougher seed bed. So the sprayer really can't get across the field because it is too rough. So until we level it out with some type of spring tillage, um, those weeds are larger they get a a chance to establish and especially with the warmer conditions that we've had uh, this year and the drier conditions we're seeing you know the perennials have already broken dormancy they're going to be putting down more root system and be tougher to control and take out with those tillage implements Mm. there's different forms of tillage out there um, so we could spend an entire hour just talking about the different forms of tillage but um, you know when i talk about aggressive tillage that's more of a fall application with a soil saver or some type of chisel plow and then coming back in with the cultivator with actual sweeps on it that can actually uproot the uh, the plants and and actually leave them on top of the soil surface. Whereas when we look at some of the vertical tillage implements, the wavy coulters, um, they're more of a seedbed preparation. They don't have that much activity in terms of weed control. Sometimes they actually just uh, make... Piss, piss weeds off a little bit mm. more and you actually get those those kinks that develop in some of those roots yeah so talk about a couple of uh weeds rob that we've obviously been keeping an eye on and using tillage and using combination with herbicides can the flea bane uh where do, how how do we use tillage or how do we ma- how do how do we manage that weed using tillage and yeah, and herbicides Yes, definitely. So we always talk about multiple effective modes of action, and that's where we want to use tillage. You know, it can be effective mode of action, uh, depending on the type of tillage, but also using it in conjunction with uh, with herbicides. And especially canna flea bane, it can germinate in the fall as a rosette or germinate in the spring just from the seed. And the fall is uh, the ones that germinate in the fall as that rosette are the really tough to control. And if you look at the photo that uh, that's showing up on the screen right now, this is an example of canna flea bean that was in a dry bean field. So there's not many options that we can actually use in dry beans to control canna flea bane. And in this scenario, they actually used aggressive tillage in the fall. So they used a chis- chisel plow and three passes with a cultivator in the spring. And you can see that we had a little bit of a rain. The uh, 
the can of flea bean plants were able to re root themselves and just keep on smiling. So that is what I'm concerned about with all this tillage in terms of uh, can trying to control these larger weeds, especially with the warmer conditions that we had last fall, but even the potential for that earlier spring. When we go in there late April, early May and conduct that tillage, these weeds are going to be extremely difficult to uh, to control. So that's where a plan is going to be very important. So let's talk strategy now. I mean, obviously, we've, we've talked about tillage. We've got post-herbicides. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got pre-emergence. And we've got a lot of weeds that are probably going to come all at the same time in the next couple mm -hmm. of weeks. You know, how do, we, how do we tackle that from a strategic perspective? Well, typically in a tillage situation, you tend to get more annual weeds. And you know, so you, you have that, that stale seedbed. So I was actually talking to Deb Campbell the other day, and we were talking about clean tillage. That's where you actually have, you know, more aggressive with a with a cultivator and, and have a stale seedbed. And in that situation, we would have more annual weeds, but the, the weed seeds are still in that field. Tillage just kind of moves them around and shifts them around a little bit. So that's where it's really important to use that soil-applied residual herbicides, whether it's pre-emergence or as that early first emerge uh, application as part of that, that that program because we're only one warm rain away from everything flushing at once whether it's going to be the the crop or the various weeds they're all going to flush at the same time and if you don't have that soil applied residual herbicide down it's going to be tough to get across all those fields um, whether you're spraying the herbicides or trying to spray the uh, the winter wheat crop with fungicides everything happens all at once regardless of when you conducted the tillage you could have conducted the tillage in in march or even middle of April or, you know, right before you, you apply, um, right before you go out and plant in, in early May. So, uh, but all those weeds, as soon as that soil reaches that, that optimal temperature, they're all going to flush at once. And that's what I'm concerned about. So that's why you really have to have that, those residual herbicides down to control those flushing weeds. Yeah. And multiple, uh, modes of action, right? Yes, definitely. Multiple effective modes of action, especially on these resistant biotypes. So, Rob, final question. That's about strip till, another form of tillage, obviously, um, growing in popularity uh, amongst corn growers and even some soybean growers. What about, uh, you know, uh, controlling weeds in that berm? Are we talking pre-plant or pre-emerge from, from a strategic perspective? One of the things that we've learned from strip till over the last couple of years is when we look at the residual herbicides, we actually get better activity and more consistent control in that berm when it's applied pre-emergence. So after that planter has gone through. A lot of times in, in strip till, we're actually looking at controlling some, some larger weeds, some winter annuals, or maybe trying to burn down a cover crop. In that scenario, we definitely want to, to apply it before we go through there. But when we're looking at layering down residual, we see a benefit pre-emergence, so after the planting. So it depends on your, your system. It's a really good, uh, I like strip till, and I think it's a way of the future. It's just a different management strategy when it comes to weed control. Awesome. Hey, Rob, some great insights today. Um, thanks for stopping by. Uh, hope we'll see you in a field soon. For sure. Thanks, Bern.